Profit. Welcome, you're watching Business Prime Time. 30 minutes for all the top business stories of the day. We have some big stars in today's show. We're talking about City, Suzlon, SBI, ONGC, and more. Stay tuned for a power pack show. Let's start with our headlines. And there might be some restructuring coming up at the big Maharaja and his fleet, Air India, in some financial trouble and restructuring coming up. Monsoon worries plague the nation and the economy. The IMD declares a monsoon this year will be below normal. The State Bank of India cuts its prime lending rate by 50 basis points or half a percent. And the European Central Bank will provide its biggest equity li liquidity injection to banks. Okay, some positive news coming from the Indian markets today. Yesterday, the Sensex finished in negative territory, barely though. Today, it finished barely in positive territory. In fact, the benchmark Sensex index was up about 0.6% for the day. And the good news was that almost every sector finished in the green, except for BankX, which had a slightly negative trend. Today, the Sensex stands at 14,422. There was a dip, as you can see, in the early part of the day, and then a gradual increase as trading continued, and then a little bit of volatility coming in the latter part of the day. The smaller and mid-caps outperformed the frontliners. The biggest gainer in the Nifty was Suzlon, up 9%. The biggest loser was HDFC. Big news of the day coming in on the big Maharaja and Air India. Now there might be an equity and a soft loan inje injection from the government that would come in. But for this, the airline will have to consider some restructuring as well, especially taking care of its wage bill. And in fact, uh, the overall wage bill will need to be cut by rupees 500 crores from 3,100 crores per year. Orjit Banerjee has been tracking the developments in the aviation industry and is armed with details on this development on Air India. Let's go right over to him. Orjit, please bring us up to speed on these details coming out for the national airline carrier Air India. Uh, Mihir, uh, a lot of things, of course, uh the government putting in uh, taxpayer money into this whole issue. Uh, so there are two, three things that the government is looking at. A, the government is looking at uh, uh, the sort of restructuring that will need to be done uh, in Air India. Firstly, there is going to be a restructuring at the top level, a restructuring of the board, uh, the government looking to bring in more professionals. The second thing is going to be restructuring of cost, and for that, the government is looking at two aspects. One, the number of employees that Air India has. Uh, remember that even though... Uh, 31,000 is the official figure. Uh, the ministry has found out that there are almost 15,000 more people who are directly or indirectly employed uh, by Air India. Maybe they are on contract or they are looking at certain services for a short period of time. So the government would be looking at rationalization of that structure. So expect the number of employees of Air India to come down. Uh, they are looking at salary, salary structures. There the focus will be the performance-linked incentive, which is humongous. For, uh, to, just to give you an example, a technician in India gets a salary of 50,000 and a performance-linked uh, incentive of one and a half lakhs. So uh, this is something which is probably going to come down. Uh, then the government is also looking at uh, uh, the fleet size, uh, the new aircraft orders which Air India has placed. There could be some pruning in that. And uh, the uh, amount of uh, uh, the aircraft that Air India flies, there could be some rationalization in all of those. Uh, the, uh, the civil aviation minister met the prime minister today, and there, must, there was a strong message NDTV learns from the PM that this needs to be sorted out very quickly. And this is what the uh, civil aviation minister had to say uh, to the media after the meeting with the prime minister. Air India will have to rise to the occasion. The government's support is there, but the government's support also comes with the condition that Air India must shape up, must become leaner and trimmer, and also must put its best foot forward. All employees will have to look at the global aviation scenario, the national aviation scenario. It is not an easy time for aviation in general, globally, and it is no different in India. Air India has to submit its uh, restructuring plan within a month to the committee of secretaries headed by the cabinet secretary, which in turn will 
ask them to take necessary steps based on that recommendation or if anything more is required, they will be advised to do so. Okay, Orjit Banerjee, thanks much for those developments coming out of Air India. Aviation Minister, pretty straightforward. Air India may need to ship up or ship up or ship out going ahead. Let's see what comes up for the Maharaja and India's airline. We now move on and talk a little bit about another economic worry for the nation. How about the weather and the monsoons? Well, the Indian Met Department has come out with a declaration that this year the monsoon will be lesser than average or lesser than the long period average. In fact, 93% of LPA compared to an earlier forecast of 96%, largely due to El Nino. Now, Pallav Bagla is joining us, who is the science editor here at NDTV, to tell us a bit more on the monsoons this year. Pallav, please share with us. See, the India Med Department has downgraded its forecast from near normal to below normal, which essentially means the country has to start bracing for a low water economy. We can't use as much water as we were using in earlier years because this year the rainfall is likely to be lower than normal, which also means that we need to prepare very hard since this is the time the economy was hoping to revive. But there are hopes. See, every year when the June rainfalls have been short in earlier years, it does not mean that the monsoon may, be, may not be normal. There are several years where the monsoon has revived in June, in July and August, and the monsoon turns out to be normal. There are rain-bearing clouds which are already forming over Arabian Sea and Bay of Bengal. If they happen, then we might expect rains, good rains, both in July and August. But the country is, needs to be concerned, but not alarmed just yet. Thanks for that update. We also had a chance to hear from Mr. Prithviraj Chauhan, who is the science minister. Here's what he said. Summary update for the 2009 Southwest Monsoon Rainfall. Number one, IMD's long-range forecast update for the 2009 Southwest Monsoon season that is June to September, is that the rainfall is likely to be below normal. Quantitatively, monsoon season rainfall for the country as a whole is likely to be 93% of the long period average with a model error of 4%. Okay, let's talk about some corporate news now. Suslon Energy, the world's most valued wind turbine maker, is in a new age space and has to think of some new age strategies these days. On the financial front, it has been involved in a number of innovations and decisions, and right now it is considering a stake sale of Hansen. It's armed to United Technologies, a $60 billion a year U.S. conglomerate. Here's our story. pile of debt estimated to be 12,000 crore rupees and so he's turning his attention to selling blocks in Suzlon's Belgian gearbox manufacturing subsidiary Hansen Transmission and after selling 10% stake to investment company Ecofin for 600 crores NDTV learns Suzlon management has now initiated dialogue for another round of divestment with NYSC listed United Technologies Corporation one of the largest manufacturing conglomerates of United States with over $58 billion of revenue for selling a significant minority stake in Hansen that could go up to 33%. At current market price, the deal could fetch close to 2,400 crore rupees. A separate 50-50 joint venture exclusively for the United States is also being talked about. UTC, however, has said they would prefer a stake in Suzlon instead. Preliminary meetings have taken place in Canada recently between the two managements. It's a win-win for both. For UTC, known around the world for Otis elevators or carrier air conditioners, or for their Pratt & Whitney aircraft engines, has a component business which they want to grow. Wind energy and renewables is a bet for the future. And for Suzlon, UTC brings access to over 100 countries, especially the U.S. market, where its experience so far has not been great. Any stake sale in Hansen uh, will ease the debt uh, levels in the company, and it should allow Suzlon to repay quite a big chunk of its 
and uh, apart from that i think even the company is also thinking about a qyp to raise the for the fund even though the suzlon management refused to comment on what they said was speculative news the stock reacted positively after profit broke the story ending the day up over 8% with over 61% stake in Hansen, Tulsi Tati can afford to do a stake sale, raise cash to retire debt. There is still pressure on Suzlon's balance sheet. It has still not managed to convince all the FCCB holders to change the norms of the debt covenant. So at this point in time, it's very difficult for Suzlon to seek a premium for the Hansen stake sale. In Mumbai, Arjit Barman for NDTV Profit. Big government and corporate stars in this segment and more big corporate stars coming up in the next segment. How about the big daddy of the banking world, State Bank of India, which plans a PLR cut of 50 basis points. Presented by Hero Honda, Duck Duck Go. Business Primetime, brought to you by LIC of India. Future Group, India Tomorrow. And Accenture Consulting, technology outsourcing Accenture, high performance delivered. A new government charts a new course for India. What will Budget 2009 mean for you? What the markets are hungry for and will they get it? The NDTV Profit Think Tank breaks it all down for you. The new government and the new budget. When it's important, India turns to us. NDTV Profit. Budget 2009, presented by Hero Honda, Duck Duck Go. Biti ki shadi karwana hai bhoot hi asaan. Thoda si baat dor. Aur thoda sa intazar. Par ab life insurance paana hai sach pocha asaan. Billa sa life insurance, saral jeevan plan. बिना मेडिकल टेस्ट बिना झंझट लाइफ इंश्योरेंस फटाफट लेकिन शादी करवाना टू फील टू लर्न टू ड्रीम टू मेक इट रियल ऑल इट टेक्स इज अ टच न्यू टच फोन फ्रॉम एल जी ज्वाइन द टच जेनरेशन Tata Motors score a century offer. Buy a Tata card, get cash benefits up to rupees forty thousand, and win scratch card gifts of up to rupees one lakh. Rush to your nearest Tata Motors showroom. India, home to the leaders, the change makers, to the young and the educated, wanting, asking, demanding. At India Bulls Real Estate, we are listening. When it comes to work and home spaces, we know what you want. From large uninterrupted floor plates, thoughtful amenities to cafeterias, so you're not forced to invest in additional space. From impenetrable security systems to energy-saving innovations, we do all it takes for you and the environment. Just why our One India Bulls Center and India Bulls Finance Center are among the greenest buildings in the world. Now look at our homes, green, Connected, fun, convenient, secure, sustainable. We do everything to make our homes your best places in the world. In Devil's Real Estate, you come first. Back here watching Business Prime Time. Let's talk about the Indian markets. 22,000 levels seemed very high and then 8,000 levels very low. A number of analysts and experts have been saying that the markets were headed in the 15K territory by the middle of the year. About a week left for the middle of the year. The markets are at 14,200 and climbing today. Let's see how they finish up. Namrita Brar has the details of the action today on the Lal Street. 
A good race to the finish on the Nifty, almost taking 4,300 in terms of the close. Remember, a day prior to the settlement, markets were volatile as expected, but nonetheless, uh, good traction in the second half of the session. Asia in general was spiked up with commodities, dollar weakness and commodity strength was back in play. There was also conversation about Taiwan and China signing a financial memorandum of understanding. Again, U.S. Fed comments will be looked out for tonight. Sectoral smarts from cap goods and power as the leaders, but IT and healthcare as well coming in quite strong. Uh, some of the sectoral waste changes as Nifty moves to free float capitalization as of Friday as well. ONGC numbers below estimates and the stock uh, should see some kind of negative impact tomorrow. Remember the weightage of ONGC as well is going to be changing as of Friday. It's no longer going to be the second uh, biggest stock in terms of weightage on the Nifty. It's going to be replaced uh, by ITC as well as emphasis in number two and three spots falling Reliance Industries. Suzlon in conversation with the fact that its uh, subsidiary Hansen is looking at selling off a stake. 33% is what Suzlon wants to sell out of Hansen to a UK based player. Uh, United Technology and hopes to get about 2,500 crores from that uh, combined with its QIP of 4,500 crores which will substantially reduce the debt. Educom Ben Pearson signing a JV 50-50 in the vocational training space and good news for the other education stocks as well which rallied on hopes of increased investment by foreign majors. Sugar prices at a three-year high and these stocks of course zooming up for tomorrow. Monsoons below normal. Big, big headline cuts in consumer staples, autos, discretionary and farm equipment expected FNO settlements or volatility will reign and big announcement coming in from SBI as the country's largest lender cuts rates by 50 basis points others will follow as Namrata just mentioned the big daddy of the banking business the State Bank of India they has announced a PLR cut or prime lending rate cut of 50 basis points or 1 percent Ragini Varma tracks this sector in detail is joining us from Mumbai Ragini the Reserve Bank of India has put on a full-on attack against interest rates and looks like banks are following suit one of the nation's biggest bank has cut its PLR. Can you tell us if more banks are expected to follow suit? Uh, well, coming close on the heels of a cut in deposits rates uh, by SBI very recently, the State Bank of India has gone ahead and slashed its uh, uh, benchmark uh, prime lending rate by 50 basis points, which is now down from 12.25% to 11.75%. Certainly good news uh, for the customers as well as uh, it signals uh, a low interest rate trend now going forward because, as you said, uh, SBI is indeed the big daddy of the banking industry and we could expect some more interest rate cuts coming now from the banks which are yet to revise their interest rates. Uh, we did see uh, banks like Union Bank recently cut down their prime lending rates, but there are other PSU banks, and I was speaking to them. They, they said that they will definitely now look uh, very closely at cutting down their interest rates. Uh, some of the other banks which recently revised their interest rates, however, said that they might wait for some signals from the budget, uh, which is likely to uh, come soon. Um, well, really, the reason behind these interest rate cuts is the falling uh, cost of funds. Uh, uh, bankers have been telling us uh, that uh, cost of funds have declined uh, anywhere between uh, 100 basis points to 150 basis points, uh, and uh, the trend continues. Uh, uh, the cost of funds will be going down even going forward. So we could expect all the other banks which have still to revise their interest rates, look at them again. Uh, uh, we could remind our viewers that SBI also recently revised uh, their deposit rates uh, uh, by, and cut them down by 25 basis points. Other banks are likely to follow suit. They may also look at cutting the deposit rates first and then revise their uh, uh, interest rates, the, B, uh, the BBLR. Uh. So definitely, even if people are not really happy with the rains, uh, it's pouring good news, uh, at least for SBI's existing customers. Indeed, good news for SBI's customers. Ragini Varma, thanks so much for that update. Let's switch gears and talk a little bit about the oil space right now. And now at a time when crude oil prices are on the boil, ONGC, India's number one oil and gas exploration company, has reported a 16% decline in its earnings today. Disappointing the street, but the more worrying part that has come out has been a fall in its oil production. Here's a peek into the report card for ONGC. With assets more than 30 years old, age is now showing on ONGC, India's top energy firm, as it reported a 7% decline in oil production and a 16% fall in net profit for the March quarter, with the outfalling for the first time since the Bombay High Platform fire of 2005. Delay in project is nothing unusual, but in last year we have seen delays due to, un, uh, to, due to extraordinary circumstances. So what are these? Yeah, these three, three platforms, and they, I mean this is all this uh, circumstances getting together in one year really caused nearly one million ton of oil production loss. 
Recovering oil from its aging fields is a major everyday challenge for ONGC. For the March quarter, its output fell to 6.48 million tonnes from 6.95 million tonnes a year ago. The company, however, has managed to maintain natural gas production to 6.16 billion cubic metres. ONGC wants the government to free up gas pricing so that it can sell gas at market-determined prices like its private sector rival, Reliance Industries. Should we move towards market prices? If so, then, uh, you know, it, what are its implications on the current battle that's going on? Yes, uh, if you ask my personal views, definitely uh, that should be the right step uh, stage because having multiple prices is not a good scenario. Every consumer looks forward and starts putting pressure to get the supplies which are where the prices are the lowest. Yeah, uh, the ONGC has paid out over 28,000 crore uh, rupees as subsidy in the last fiscal. But there may be some respite on this front as global oil prices have started climbing with analysts expecting it to cross over $100 a barrel very soon. In New Delhi with Ashu Sinha, Bianca Ghosh, NDTV Profit. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the steel industry now. Jindal Steel is looking at some corporate debt restructuring going ahead for its stainless steel business. An interesting development given the number of news and events coming out in the industry. Nisha Podar tracks this development, and here's our story. Jindal Stainless may be making these coins for the government of India. But it's the scarcity of moolah that has forced Ratan Jindal to go for a corporate debt restructuring. The aim is to avoid defaulting on repayment towards part of its heavy 6,000 crore rupee debt. And principal lenders, State Bank of India, Punjab National Bank and Canara Bank are seen taking a decision on the terms of the CDR in a few days from now. What we are say, just saying is a liquidity support. There are certain repayments falling in the next three years, uh, plus the cash shortfall. So effectively, over the next three years, there'll be around 2,500 to 3,000 crore over, uh, spread out over a period of three years. That's the liquidity support which we are, we, are, we are asking from the lenders. That's it. Jindal Stainless needs to pay 650 crore rupees by December this year, and close to 3,000 crore rupees over the next three years and a rescheduling will most likely come at a price that banks will extract. However, this move will ensure the expansion plans stay on track without any significant cost escalation on delays. The entire uh, expansion plan, which has already been tied up, uh, would, be, would go on as usual because we are not expecting any substantial increment or increase in the, in the outlay. So everything remains as it is. Uh, there is only a shortfall of equity on the back of the CDR news, the Jindal stainless stock zoomed up by 17% in the day's trade. The stock markets reacted positively as temporary relief is in sight for Jindal stainless, which has been reeling under the pressure of shrinking export market and lower stainless steel prices, which has pressurized its margins. Now, this rescheduling of debt will give it enough time to bounce back, which the company thinks will see it emerge out of the CDR in next two to three years. In Mumbai, Nisha Podar for NDTV Profit. Okay, just a little earlier, we had brought you the story that the State Bank of India has cut its prime lending rate by 50 basis points. Right now, joining us over the phone line is the Chief Financial Officer of SBI, Mr. S.S. Ranjan. Mr. Ranjan, thank you very much for joining us on the show. Um, question for you is, uh, good news, I guess, for SBI's customers, 50 basis points cut in the PLR coming up. And can you let us know if we can expect more cuts in the future? And perhaps uh, could other banks follow suit? Okay, looks like we've lost Mr. Ranjan on the phone right now, but we'll try and get him back. We're going to slip into a short break right now. More biggies on the corporate front coming up right on the other side. We expect as an infra, infra company that uh, uh, companies which have good projects, potential is proven, uh, there should be a definite uh, uh, arrangement available, a policy decision for companies to raise uh, uh, the infrastructure bonds. We expect that uh, government should be able to reinstate 
the provisions of uh, 18 G uh, which is actually uh, which gives income tax holiday to the banks and institutions who are interest via from the income they earn uh, by lending to the infrastructure banks. CEO Wishlist is brought to you by LIC of India. Live from New York, all the business news that affects India. And over the next 30 minutes, we're going to take you through all the money and market news. Special reports and interviews with experts. The market can begin to stabilize. On the global trends that will hit home. NASDAQ Live. Weeknights at 10.30 on NDTV Profit. NASDAQ Live, brought to you by the new Land Cruiser, the pride of the world, now in India. Mahindra Holidays and Resorts India Limited, a Mahindra Group company, now offers a public issue of 92,65,275 equity shares of 10 rupees each for cash at a premium. The 100% book built issue is being offered in a price band of 275 to 325 rupees per equity share. Issue opens 23rd June, closes 26th June. For risk factors and more details, refer to the Red Herring Prospectus, available on the websites of the company, Global Coordinator and Book Running Lead Manager and other lead managers. Presenting the HP Elite Book 2530P Notebook PC. Powered by Intel Centrino 2 with Repro technology. Dare to take the Elite Book Challenge. SMS Elite to 56767. Business Prime Time brought to you by L.I.